Welcome back. So yesterday I had intended to do this video. It's a good thing I didn't. Uh, we we had a good Thanksgiving here yesterday. Uh, my mother came by and uh, it was nice and so I spent some extra time uh, hanging out with, with the family. And the videos that I posted yesterday performed very, very well. So I, I didn't feel there was pressure for me to do another video yesterday. And it's a good thing I didn't because uh, rosters changed from what they were yesterday to today. So I went through all 32 team rosters on their official websites and everything. I was like, oh, this guy made it. This, guy. Yeah, two cases of players who were on the rosters yesterday do not show up on the official rosters released by the NHL this morning. So this is in an order that I just randomized yesterday as well. And I was like, all right, I'll do this right after Thanksgiving dinner. But here we are the next morning. And it was a good dinner. All right, so... What I have here is a list of 32 players who have made their roster uh, as rookies, or if I wasn't able to find rookies of note, uh, I went with players who've switched teams and players who've returned to the NHL as well. So we start off with the Winnipeg Jets and a player returning to the NHL. Look at that, I even made it so it's the... This one's, this one's always been tough, and I, I had problems pronouncing it at first, um, but... I, I got to pr practice it and everything, and Saku Manalainen became a player that I was like, all right, well, he could be, and then he was gone. Uh, 28 years of age. He's back in the NHL now. It's his first games in the National Hockey League since 2018-2019. So he's been gone for a little while. Uh, I like him as a bottom six forward. Uh, he, I think it was an RFA holdout that, that kind of took him out for a while there, but yeah, Manalainen, uh, I think he's a decent player for, for the bottom six for Winnipeg. Uh, not a lot of changes in Winnipeg, but I thought, yep, yeah, Manalainen's notable, and I was glad when I looked at the official rosters and saw he was still there. Uh, Edmonton. So, rookie for Edmonton. A lot, most of these are going to be rookies, just as a note. Uh, Dylan Holloway, number 14 pick in 20, or 2020. There are number 14 picks from two different drafts on here. Anyways, Dylan Holloway. Uh, I think that he brings them some some scoring touch on the wing that they've needed. Uh, this is one thing that they've looked for from Pugliarvi. And so now you've got Kane, you've got Yamamoto, you've got Holloway, who should all be scoring points and, and goals. And so it's just a matter of, does Pugliarvi get that going as well? Or is, is Pugliarvi still on his way out of Edmonton? Does he still end up getting traded? Um, I think if Holloway has a really good start to the season, if Kane and, and Yamamoto are firing on all cylinders, it might make it easier for them to decide, all right, we're, so we're going to go ahead and move Pugliarvi after. After all, I just headed off that sneeze there, didn't I? All right, so Dylan Holloway, uh, I think, could be one of those contenders for Calder. I'll talk about that later on today as well, in all likelihood. But yeah, Oilers. Uh, Minnesota. For Minnesota, the number nine pick from 2020. Had an excellent, excellent preseason, and that's Marco Rossi. So after losing a lot of time uh, and, and being on the shelf for quite a while, now he's in the NHL, and it looks like he is set for quite the rookie season. So you want to talk about maybe a Calder hopeful, uh, Rossi would be on that list for me. Uh, excellent forward, lots of good skill, and because of Minnesota's cap problems, it actually gave Rossi, I think, a more prominent role in the preseason, and he looked pretty good. Look pretty good. So instead of bringing in veterans and all of this, they're more likely to lean on the kids. And I, I think they're in good shape with Rossi and Boldy, of course, as well. But yeah, Rossi, he did play two games last year. So this is where it's kind of, uh, but yeah, Rossi, to me, you know, making the opening night roster is a little different than the cup of coffee he had last year. I don't even know if two games is a cup of coffee. Normally it's like five or more, but anyway. Uh, so for Toronto, I went with, and this has been quite the story in Toronto, so I wanted to go ahead and discuss it as well. And that's Dennis Malgin. Uh, Malgin is uh, 25 years of age, and these are the first games he's going to have played in the NHL since 2019-2020. Uh, so he's been out of the league for a couple years, comes back, and he looked very, very good in preseason. Now this is where that it's preseason starts to show up. There are players who have very good preseasons make the team and quickly out of camp and out of preseason end up falling out of the falling off the roster. I'm really hoping that doesn't happen with Melgan. Uh, he is an older player, so I would think that he has a better chance of hitting the ground running a little bit uh, to to start the season. And so we'll see. 
Um, somebody said yesterday hit the ground running that that had been um, disproven by by MythBusters. That's why I never say bull in a china shop anymore. You will never hear me say those words. But hit the ground running, I still like, so I'm going to keep that one. So there you go. Uh, New Jersey. This one kind of surprised me a little bit. We'll see how many games he gets, and that's Simone Nemitz. Uh, Nemitz makes the roster now. He's the number two pick this past year. Uh, and honestly, very well thought of prospect. People were just surprised they didn't take Shane Wright. But yeah, Nemitz, in all likelihood, is going to be a, a, a linchpin to this blue line for a long time. Uh, and I, I am surprised he made the team out of camp, but we'll see how things go for him. Uh, for Vancouver, this is a good story. This is a good story because Nils Amon earned this job. He outplayed other guys for this role with the Canucks. We'll see how long he's on the team. He was a number 167 pick of the Colorado Avalanche in 2020. So Amon, Vancouver Canucks, have him on their roster. And we'll see how, how well he does. It looks like he's going to be the fourth line center to start the season. Uh, for the LA Kings, and this was one of the stories that really uh, everybody jumped on quickly. I even mentioned it. Even mentioned it in the preview this morning, and that's Brent Clark. Uh, Brent Clark, a number eight pick in twenty twenty one by the LA Kings, and really, in all honesty, uh, Brent Clark, I, I hope does really well for the Kings. Uh, I'd, I'd like to see more of their prospects, you know, taking that next step. Looking at you, Quentin Byfield, but Brent Clark has a good chance coming out of camp. Seems excited. They seem excited to have him, and so yeah, it's a good story for the LA Kings. Uh, for Carolina, I went with a 24-year-old who played 59 games, had three goals, 10 assists, 13 points last year. Because Carolina doesn't have a lot of new faces and, and, and rookies and all this. So I'm going with Coglin, who I think flew under the radar in Vegas. And when he was acquired by Carolina in the deal along with Pacioretty, I thought, wow, and they got Coglin thrown in too. That's, that's fantastic. I like Coglin a lot. So while I could have put Brent Burns here, I think we all know what Burns brings. I think that Coughlin uh, can be a bit of a difference maker on the blue line as well. And I think he's just starting to come into his own a little bit. Uh, defenseman could take a little bit longer to get to the next level. And I, I, I think Coughlin might be ready to do that. Plus, Carolina has an excellent defense. So uh, even though he, he might be on the third pairing, might not be considered spectacular, uh, I do think Coughlin has some upside there. Uh, for Tampa Bay... I went with 26 years old uh, from Seattle last year, played 36 games, two goals, two assists, four points, and then his time uh, in Seattle came to an end. <laughs> Hayden Fleury. Now, Hayden Fleury was a high draft pick, and it seems to me like a lot of the discussion about Hayden Fleury is related to him being a top draft pick. I remember when I was doing uh, fantasy drafts for... Uh, the Seattle Kraken, right? The Here's my expansion draft. Here's who I think they should take. And I didn't take Flurry. And I had people saying, why wouldn't you take Flurry? And I just, I hadn't seen enough in his NHL games to that point to tell me that there was a lot of upside there. But even though he had a down year from with Seattle last year, being in Tampa Bay could very well turn things around for him. And so, yeah, he'll be given that opportunity. Uh, when they waved Myers the other day, I thought, all right, so... You know, Flurry's in a good spot if they're ready to wave Myers. Or Myers just had a disastrous um, imp a disastrous first impression with him. Either way, one, one or the other, right? But yeah, so I hope Flurry's able to get things going. And again, he is young enough to get that going at the age of 26. 26, though, a little different than 24. And he, he, yeah, so once you get to about 28, you know, you're, you're, you're probably not going to get that breakthrough. Uh, Washington. So this is a good story. And so I want to throw this into this video as well. He made it. He's on the team. I can't remember if Charlie Lindgren, at age 28, I don't know if he's ever been on the opening night roster of a team. I'm trying to remember if he was ever on the opening night roster for the Montreal Canadiens. I, I don't think so, but it's possible he was. Uh, but I'm glad Lindgren's, Lindgren's getting that opportunity. He was 5-0 and last year with a 958 save percentage. Not bad. So if, if Lindgren can make this work this year in Washington as the backup, if he can spell uh, Kemper, play about 25, 30 games. Uh, really, it's, it is a feel-good story. And with goaltenders, we all know 
that they can develop in their late 20s, early 30s, and sometimes, um, you know, they come out of nowhere. Maybe Lundgren's one of those guys. Uh, Philadelphia, this is one I'm going to be interested to see how many games he ends up playing. So Philadelphia, of course, Fedotov was going to be their backup goaltender. It would appear that Samuel Erson has won that job. Uh, number 143 pick in 2018. So he would be the backup to Carter Hurt. Uh, Felix Sandstrom shows on the injured non-roster part portion of things. Uh, so we'll see whether or not Erson gets in or whether or not Sandstrom uh, you know, gets healthy and they go, well, we're going with him as the backup and Erson goes down to the minors. But his numbers in the preseason were good, understanding it's just preseason. And I, I would be interested to see if he gets a game or two, how things go. And and I didn't get to see him during the preseason. I just saw the stats. So I, I really want to see how his how his game is. And again, it's, it's nice to see Philadelphia with another goaltender, homegrown, uh, making it onto the team. Uh, Buffalo, number eight pick in 2020. There were other rookies, but I want to talk about Jack Quinn for a bit. A very good player for Rochester last year. Had an excellent season in the AHL. Now gets his chance to, to apply his trade in the NHL. And it's guys like Quinn and Paterka that are going to decide just how quickly Buffalo gets better and how much better they get. So I'll be keeping an eye on Buffalo for sure. And again, you know, I watch all the games, but there are some teams who, I, especially early in the year, I'm going to be looking and going, okay, is this... Is this the year where things get real, you know, better? Uh, Ottawa, Buffalo, Detroit. Those three Atlantic teams are going to be good to watch that way early in the year. Uh, for St. Louis, I had to change this one. I had to change this one because the guy I had written down was on the roster yesterday, not on the roster today. And I know he got waived, but I thought, you know, if Josh Levo made the team, he did not. Uh, so Nola Cherry, who's 30 years of age, uh, had an injury-riddled season last year. Played 20 games with Florida, three goals, five assists, eight points. And he showed the year before that he can score at the NHL level. So Nola Chari will get an opportunity in St. Louis to play. St. Louis has been known to have a, a good offense of their own. We'll see if Achari can get some of that scoring touch back. Um, it may just have been a one-off where he had a really good uh, offensive season. But yeah, uh, Achari, former Boston Bruin, of course. It'll be fun to see how his year goes. Uh, Nashville. Nashville, of course, has already started their season. I feel like there should be an asterisk with Nashville and San Jose. But what I want to mention, I don't know why I started that with an E. That's, nope. Cole Smith. Cole Smith, in his two games so far with Nashville, he's got one assist. Uh, and so, yeah, we're going to see how he does this year. Uh, for Smith, he's 26 years of age, so he's not as young as your standard rookie. But it's it's always nice to see a guy get into the rock get onto uh, get onto an NHL roster in his mid twenties, uh, when again it feels like the league's getting younger and younger. So it's always nice to see these guys break through and they're a little bit older. And you know they have to work really hard for it because they're outworking somebody who's a hot hot prospect or they're outworking somebody who might be a good veteran depth guy. So yeah, we'll see how Cole Smith's season goes. Uh, Chicago for Chicago. Uh, Chicago is a tough one. Because, sadly, some of their exciting rookies, not part of the team. And I'm going with Buddy Robinson. Buddy Robinson, 31 years of age now. Uh, played in Anaheim last year. Had one goal and five assists for six points in 32 games. And Robinson's a good, like, again, bottom six character guy. Um, I've liked Robinson a lot at times over the last what was it, four years now. Uh, but, yeah, we'll see how things go for him in Chicago. Look, Chicago is in the midst of a rebuild. And when you have a team that's rebuilding and you have a you know roster that looks not great on paper, you're going to have guys who have turnaround seasons. So it's possible that Robinson maybe gets more minutes with Chicago than he was getting in Anaheim. Who knows, right? Uh, but yeah, so we'll see how things go for him. Uh, Calgary, and I, there are other additions for Chicago too, but I've talked about them in previous videos. So with Calgary, I'm going with Nick Malosh. Nick Malosh makes the team, which is, think about this for a second. Nick Malosh beat out Yusuf Valimaki. I would not have thought that was going to happen, even when they signed Nick Malosh. So Malosh, uh, 25 years of age, last year with San Jose, played 50 games, had two goals, five assists, seven points. It was a turnaround for a defenseman that had a lot of upside or was seen to have a lot of upside before he reached the NHL, has had his struggles here and there. 
But making the, the roster with the Calgary Flames, especially on the blue line, is not an easy task. And again, they waived Valimaki, lose him for nothing, and Malosh is on the roster. So uh, we'll see how things go for him. Again, probably third pairing, not going to be any higher up in the roster unless somebody gets hurt. But yeah, interesting. Uh, Ottawa, I've talked about this guy before. I'm going to talk about him again here. Uh, one note with Ottawa, of course, they did send Ridley Gregg down. So Ridley Gregg, the, the excitement for Ridley Gregg is going to have to wait. But let the hype for Jake Sanderson get started. Jake Sanderson is the guy that Sens fans have been waiting for since they drafted him. He was drafted fifth overall in 2020. So two years later, he's making his debut. That's about the right timeline. Uh, Sanderson is seen as being a, a top two guy. Um, maybe a number one defenseman. And this is on a team that already has Shabbat. This is a team that has other prospects who are coming along who could be top four, top two defensemen as well. Ottawa has quietly put together one of the best young groups on the blue line in the National Hockey League. Now it's a matter of it all coalescing and making it all work. Uh, Detroit. Um, interesting one with this one. Elmer. Elmer Soderblom, according to the NHL site, is still listed as six foot six. And yet by all accounts he's six foot eight. I've heard six foot nine. Uh so yeah, Elmer Soderblom, who was a number one hundred and fifty nine pick in twenty nineteen. He's a steal already, but how much of a steal is he? How many goals will he put up? How intimidating is he gonna be? Is he a, is he going to be a power forward uh throwback to the nineteen eighties? And the fact that on skates, he's going to be seven feet tall. Yeah, he's going to be an intimidating presence for Detroit. And they're putting together a really good young team. They should be fun to watch. Soderblom's going to be one of the reasons. Uh, for Seattle. How well is Shane Wright going to fit in? How many points is Shane Wright going to put up? How many games is he going to play? Does he play the full season in Seattle? Does he play half a season? Do they... Do they give them the nine games and then say, all right, so we're going to burn the first year of your contract and then get up almost to 40 and say, you know what? We don't want to lose that one year of control. And that's something I'll be talking about as the year goes along, uh, where there's a certain number of years you've played in the National Hockey League before you become an unrestricted free agent. So if you have a rookie play beyond that 40 game mark, now you've lost one year of control. They're one year closer to being an unrestricted free agent. So uh, we'll see how things go for all these rookies and how many guys fall into that category of a GM saying I'd like to have more control. But uh, Wright should play the entire season. That's been the plan according to Ron Francis. Uh, for Pittsburgh, uh, Ryan Paling was acquired from the Montreal Canadiens. And honestly, Paling is a, a very solid depth forward. Uh, at this point, he's 23 years of age. Last year in 57 games, he had 9 goals, 8 assists, 17 points. He doesn't wow with points. He doesn't need to in Pittsburgh. But I, I do think that he's a solid addition from Montreal. And honestly, I think he had a half-decent season on a Montreal team that wasn't great last year. So yeah, I'll be interested to see how things go for him with the Pittsburgh Penguins. Uh, for Dallas... I went with one that, you know, it's funny, when, when Dallas drafted Wyatt Johnston, uh, there were some eyebrows raised only because it was believed that he was probably going to be available in the second round, and there might have been better players to pick. But Wyatt Johnston makes this team, he was a number 23 pick in 2021, and so Dallas has, has brought him along, now he's going to make the team, and we'll see how many games he plays. Um, I'm anxious to see him play, because again, when he was drafted, uh, I, I kind of had this feeling of, okay, so we'll see, because that feels like it might be a bit of a reach. There's this other guy I really like, so, uh, but we'll see. I, I really wish Johnston nothing but the best, of course, because being a Dallas fan, that's how that works. Uh, for Boston, and I watched three of the Boston Bruins preseason games, and I'm really glad this guy made it, because there have been preseasons where the best players don't make it, and this year McLaughlin was one of the best players, didn't make it. Uh, Jacob Lauko. Lauko, absolutely fantastic preseason for him. Hardworking on every single shift. Really excited to see what he can do with the Boston Bruins this year. And again, not everybody on this board is going to play the full season. Maybe Lauko doesn't play the full season, but I'm glad he earned himself a job with his preseason. Uh, for Anaheim, this is an interesting one for me. 
because I saw him on the list and I'm like, who? So this is one of the reasons this video exists. Pavel Regenda. Pavel Regenda, undrafted, 22 years of age, and won bronze at the Olympics. So we'll see how Pavel Regenda does in the National Hockey League. Uh, this is one of those ones that... And you know what? With Pat Verbeek as the GM, who knows? Maybe this Regenda is going to end up being a steal, and maybe I can uh, talk about what a great job Verbeek's done of putting together a half-decent team sooner than we might have thought. Uh, the Ducks, I think, want to be at least competitive. I think they realize they're not a playoff team, but they want to be competitive. And who knows? Maybe Regenda ends up being a pretty good... I, again, I saw his name on the list. I'm like, who? We're, really? He? I have no idea. So that this list is born. Uh, for Vegas... Uh, no big rookie names on the on the list for them. Uh, so I'm going with Aiden Hill. Aiden Hill last year, uh, 10, 11, and 1 with a 906 save percentage. He's 26 years of age. It's kind of a make or break season for Aiden Hill, uh, who has struggled to make it to the National Hockey League at points, has been a better goaltender in the NHL than he was in the AHL at points as well. And now with Vegas, he gets a chance to play, at least until uh, Brassois is ready to go. As far as I know, Brassois is on, on IR at this point, meaning it'll be Thompson and Hill. And then once Brassois is back, then you've got a question to ask yourself if you're Vegas. So for Hill, it's important that any starts he gets, that he shows himself to be pretty good. So then they're saying, well, I guess we can send down Thompson because Thompson still does not need uh, waivers, um, which would be too bad for Thompson because I think he's ready. San Jose, who have already started their season, uh, so Matt Benning, again, this is about guys who maybe you, you don't know has have gone to those teams. Matt Benning had a rough time of it in Prague, uh, no points and a minus four over those two games. So he'll be looking to not trend towards a plus minus of negative 164 this year. Uh, so yeah, uh, Benning though with San Jose, uh, I do think there's, there's some, some decent years left for him. He is 28 years of age, and as I've said, with defensemen, they can develop later. Uh, not meaning that Benning's still developing. What you see is what you get with Benning, but that defensemen will also usually play until they're older. Maybe there's something to that too, right? Uh, but hey, uh, New York Islanders are up next, and this is kind of a, a, a good story as well. Another player coming back into the league who was in it before, and that's Nikita Soshnikov. And what's interesting is I'm pretty sure that when Soshnikov signed with with the Islanders. I don't even think it made it into a News of the Day video. I don't think it did anyways. Uh, 28 years of age, and this is the first NHL games that he'll have played since 2018-2019. So there are numerous players coming back into the league who haven't played in a few years. Uh, I, I do enjoy that because it means they stuck with it despite not being in the National Hockey League. That's excellent. In some cases, they just went to the KHL, European leagues. But uh, yeah, I, I, I do appreciate players not giving up on that NHL dream, even when it looks like they should. Uh, for Colorado, uh, this is another player coming back into the league who hasn't been in it in a while. And this is another one, too, that when they signed him, I thought, well, that's an odd, odd signing. And I, I still, I thought Lucas Sedlak was an odd signing. But for Lucas Sedlak, he is 29 years of age. These are the first games he'll have played in the NHL since 2018-2019. And uh, Colorado's GM, pretty good at figuring out who to pick up and who not to. So I'm not going to second guess Joe Sackick at all. And we'll see how Sedlak fits in, I would assume, on the fourth line for Colorado. For Florida, one of the ones I had to change as well. Uh, the player I'd written down may end up making the team later, but doesn't make the team out of camp. So, picked up on waivers, Josh Mahura. Uh, Josh Mahura being waived by, by the, the Ducks is a bit of a red flag, of course. Mahura, 24 years of age last year. Played 38 games, had three goals, four assists for seven points for Anaheim. And I like Mahura, uh, but he did have a rough year last year. And I understand that if you don't have a great camp, you get waived. I think this might be one of the first years where we've seen a lot of players on waivers who are veterans. Although it's not just about training camp performance there either. It is about cap flexibility too. Uh, so for Mahura, he ends up going to Florida. I think Florida is going to give him every chance to, to play. And we have seen Florida take a guy like Forsling. Forsling, they pick up on waivers, and now he's a top guy. So, Mahura, they pick up on waivers. What's next for him? Uh, so, yeah, we will find out soon enough. Uh, and he is only 24. Uh, for Montreal, so there were, there were a lot of young guys making it. 
and I thought, well, I, I could talk about uh, Slavkovsky, but we've talked about Slavkovsky all summer, it feels like. So Caden Gooley's my pick for them. A 16 pick in 2020. I think Montreal fans are excited to see what he can do uh, in the regular season with an honorable mention to Jack Eye, who I'm excited to see play as well. Uh, but yeah, Gooley, uh, pretty solid overall uh, performance in the preseason, wins him a job in the regular season. I, I saw some some comments about Gooley from Canadian fans that they were excited to see him play. So um, yeah, first round draft picks, Montreal's starting to line him up and get him, in, get him onto the roster. And we're, we're going to see Montreal getting younger and younger, I would think, over the next couple of years as this rebuild continues. Uh, for the New York Rangers, I went with 31-year-old Ryan Carpenter. Now, I do believe Ryan Carpenter played for the Rangers before. Because I saw this and I was looking at it this morning. I'm like, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm pretty sure Carpenter played for them before. Now, Carpenter's 31 years of age. Uh, in 67 games last year, three goals, nine assists, 12 points. Played split between Chicago and Calgary. And, and Carpenter might end up on waivers again at some point this year, and some other team might pick him up. There's going to be a very interesting journeyman career video on Ryan Carpenter at some point once his career's come to an end. But, uh, yeah, Carpenter has been around the league for a while, and he's proven himself to be a useful bottom bottom six, fourth line type guy. Uh, he had a good run there with Vegas back in their first year. That was where I remember making a video on who's Ryan Carpenter, and it did really well. Because I think a lot of people were asking the same question when he went to Vegas and suddenly was was playing very, very well. So we'll see if with the Rangers, maybe something like that happens for him this time around, right? Uh, for Columbus, Matthew Olivier is going to give him some toughness. Uh, Matthew Olivier, uh, 25 years of age, uh, 10 games with Nashville last year, just the one assist. In 48 career NHL games, he's got 88 penalty minutes, and he is willing to drop the mitts. So for Columbus, they've picked up a guy who toughens up their lineup a little bit here. And of course, there's there's obviously you've got Johnny Hockey coming in. But this really isn't about superstar players switching teams as much as about, did you know this guy was on this team now? And thus, Matthew Olivier. I, I think Olivier can be useful in a bottom six role as well. And when I say I like a player, it doesn't necessarily mean that I, I disagree with a team cutting him or a team waving him. Just, yeah, that was a pretty good play. A pretty good game that guy had. And, and I understand if he doesn't necessarily make it. Uh, Arizona, number nine pick in 2021, and he made the team. So Dylan Gunther was the price paid by the Vancouver Canucks to rid themselves of the contracts uh, of, of Louis Erickson uh, and Roussel and Beagle. And of course, they picked up Oliver Ekman Larson in that deal and Connor Garland. And as much as I like Garland and as much as I, I do like Ekman Larson, I don't necessarily like his contract. I complained at the time that trading out a number one draft pick, number, well, number nine overall, first round draft pick, uh, that became Dylan Gunther, that concerned me. So the concern is now raised to yeah, I'm, I'm still concerned. It's it, The concern level comes up just a little bit. Remembering that he cracked the roster for the Arizona Coyotes, a rebuilding team that has torn their roster down. So is it easier for Gunther to make the team with Arizona than it would be in LA or Toronto or Edmonton? Yes, absolutely. But I'm still going to be interested to see how his season goes and how, he tra how, how his trajectory uh, progresses from here. Because really that is one of those moves that just baffled and bewildered me and then of course Benning's fired not long after when the Canucks get off to a bad start so yeah if Gunther turns out to be the kind of top six forward that he's projected to be that I remember at that draft I you know I was like well Gunther looks like a good player maybe the Canucks can oh well they traded that draft pick and oh Gunther goes in that's the draft pick gone so we'll see uh, how things go for Gunther and how things go for players on the board. So which player who is playing for a brand new team this year are you excited to watch? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through you just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm excited for the start of the regular season and go. Thanks again for watching. I'll talk to you again soon. I, 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 have, to, I have to make it the same sign off. It doesn't feel right to just say go and, and stop. So I won't.